Young Atlas, do you know what's in a soul? A person's hopes and dreams, their weaknesses and fears. A soul allows you to be manipulated. And this, this is why I rid you of its burden. Remember your purpose, boy. Pretty cool opening, right? So this is Rising Spire, specifically the prelude of it. So this is available for free right now on Steam, and if you're a fan of the classic JRPGs from way back in like the Super Nintendo era that are still being made, are still pretty awesome, I recommend checking this one out. So I'm gonna go ahead and run into this enemy real quick to start, just so you guys can see real quick what the game is, what it's all about. So here we have our, our basic HP, SP, like, like your mana and stuff, right? Like. I don't know what, exactly what it stands for, but you know, it's your, it's your resource, right? It's your resource to use some abilities. We have our character Atlas, our main character, and of course an enemy, a wolf. I'm gonna go ahead and use a skill, and I'm gonna inflict some moderate damage with Shieldbreaker. Now, one thing I wanted to point out right away is I really like that you can mouse over the debuffs and you can just see exactly what they do. Hit him with Shieldbreaker and it's reducing his defense by 20%. So one thing I wanted to point out right away is the game works really well with mouse and keyboard. So you can you don't have to worry about having a controller because you can you can really, really easily scroll over UI elements and get a heads up of what they do, right? Items, flee, and of course we'll kill this enemy and show you the victory screen. Animal bones, items received, and the spear of fallen mastery has gained six experience. Not Atlas. Of the character but the spear itself so i'm going to show you a little bit more about that so our menu has our character right his weapon an empty slot we don't know what that's used for yet hp sp meals like you could actually get meals and, and eat them at a campfire so you can heal up and potions which we can use anywhere you don't have to use it as a campfire now here is an amulet that's has a gem in it we don't know what that's used for yet but it's a big story element so i'm gonna go ahead and go to our items You'll see that the animal bones I obtained from the enemy is used in crafting. Used in crafting, but crafting doesn't exist. It's not quite in the game yet, so this is a very early on prelude, like a demo of the game before it launches. But we're getting a, we're getting a sneak peek at the features, right? Uh, looking for more into this UI a little bit, we'll go to the Mastery tab, and we'll see the Spear of the Fallen. Remember how we got experience for the Spear at the end of the fight? Well, that's how this is going to work. Your character's not leveling up, but your weapons are. So you're leveling your weapons here and get leveling your mastery. And as you level it, you'll unlock new talents and abilities for that weapon. And you'll see there's five total boxes here. So that leads us to believe multiple weapons, right? So you can choose which one works for you, level it up, and get different, different abilities. And a character should act quite differently in combat. Now, talents down here. You'll see Shield Breaker, that's the ability I used during the fight, right? You see exactly what it does. And then I have like these two talents here that'll modify how it works. Cripple. Shield Breaker also reduces a target's evasion by 30% for five turns. Sunder. Increased Shield Breaker damage by 60%. So I'm gonna go with the extra damage right there. And then here's our, our journal. It tells us about the story. And it gives us a little hint of uh, what to do, right? We do have a settings option here. Very, very basic stuff right now that should be expanded. I hope it is. Hope it's expanded in the future. And I would really like to see, um, I don't know, a little bit more customization when it comes to weapons. More choices rather than just between two. But we'll see. We'll see how the game expands. Like I said, it's a very, very early um, model of the game. You know, prelude of the game. So it's a lot of stuff to uh, still add. I do really like the way the character looks and that battles are initiated both by when you run into enemies on the world map like that, or in a zone, I guess world map's not really the proper term. So you'll start a fight, oh, I missed. You'll start a fight like that, or if you're rolling around the zones at night, you can get randomized battles and the enemies are different. I really like that and I'm gonna show you guys that. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to, to nighttime so we can see how that works out. All right, here we are at nighttime. You'll see that little clock that appeared up at the top there. As you're uh, running around, time will progress and it will change the world a little bit. So we can get randomized battles at night. I'm gonna try to get one to pop up. We'll see. I'm roaming around here. 
we should have a random battle start and hopefully I don't lose that battle because that would be embarrassing. There it is. Here we go, we're fighting this weird Strix. We're fighting an Asus video card. The Strix. For anyone that doesn't know, that's what they call their video cards. Some of their video cards. So the dude's uh, definitely stronger than the wolves I was battling before, and he crit me. Damn it. But he's not that strong. I should be able to kill him, no problem. Shield breaker still on cooldown. Ah, missed again. There we go. So there's our win. And you'll get, obviously, different materials, different amounts of experience based off the units you kill, of course, right? As we expect. But at nighttime, you'll see that, yeah, you can get randomized battles. Uh, potions, as well as different enemies. I'm going to go ahead and use a potion now because I'm missing a fair amount of health. It's going to go ahead and heal me. And I'm going to continue on. Now, the meals that I have that you can get, like the food, that can only be used at a campfire. So you do have to find a campfire to heal up fully or get a larger heal, which is very, very important. Because as you progress through the world, which I really do like the um, the zones, because you can go off the beaten path. You don't have to just follow this. You can go up behind the trees and stuff and find some other stuff. Um, I'm still at night. Uh, still nighttime as I'm wandering around, so I'm going to continually run into randomized battles. So that is a strategy. You can say, hey, I'm going to go back and rest a little bit and use the campfire so it's daytime rather than go into the deeper zones at night so you don't have to run into randomized battles and you can avoid the, the enemies out in the zone if you choose to do that. But it's always good to get experience and level, right? It's an RPG, classic RPG. You gotta grind. You have to. I love grinding. I'm probably the odd one out there, but I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead a little bit more. During your adventures in this game, you are gonna run into NPCs. There are dialogues, obviously. There's gotta be a story, which I'm very interested in. I'm wondering how the story's gonna be. I hope it's not too lighthearted. I'm hoping it's a little darker. We'll see. But I ran into these NPCs and they say, Hey, bro, uh... We need something, can you help us? As always, right? Uh, all those quests. Go fetch me this and bring it back, buddy. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and work on that. Let's get that done. So we're working our way towards our quest and I'm way up here at the top left now because I didn't want to uh, block any more of this UI so you can see the clean battle UI as we kill this wolf. I really like the animations in the game. I like the, uh, the attacks. The, like, the character will flinch when he gets hit. I really like that and I like that a lot in in all games, but specifically like card games, you ever play a card game where like there's no animation at all, it's just like doing the damage, you just use the card and it goes away? That kind of irks me a little bit. I like when the characters attack and move and stuff, so I do like seeing stuff like that, where the character's actually going to attack, rather than just the damage gets inflicted and there's nothing moving. I don't know, I'm a simple person, I have no imagination, alright? You gotta show me the attack. I don't know. I got no imagination, this is why I don't read. Alright, moving on, let's go. So here we are, resting at a camp, with good old Atlas, just chilling by his camp, resting. And we're going to take a look at our uh, our quest log here. Well, I guess it's more of a journal, not a quest log, but this happens to be like a, a bit of a quest that I'm on. Those, there was two NPCs I met in the forest, they said, hey, we need this herb. So I met two strange brothers, it's not often we see humans this deep within the forest. Helping them find that herb might get them out of here sooner. Perhaps Lilith could find some use of the herb as well, I'll make sure to gather enough for both of them. So the, the text is well written, it's... Using proper English, as far as I can tell. I don't know, I'm not an English major. But it looks pretty good. Um, it's easy to read. And uh, it seems like the story is pretty decent to start. But I'm hoping it gets serious. I hope there's, there's character deaths. There's character deaths that you... I don't know. Like, it's not that whole lighthearted stuff where you never kill anyone. No, no ally ever dies. Something like that. That always irks me. I missed... That irks me as well, missing my attacks. Maybe I should change Shield Breaker to uh, reduce the enemy evasion. See? I'm already thinking of ways to change it up. If it bothers you, missing your attacks, that might be a good thing, you know? Shield Breaker, go! There we go. So we defeated the two wolves that were defending our, uh, our herb that we're after. That's that big plant right there. There we go. Bloodleaf obtained. So we're going to go ahead and head back to the NPCs. Let's do it. Alright, we made it back to our brothers in the camp. 
Is this it? I'd say so. Hey, you go, Miles. Is that everything we need? All right. So Miles is happy. Can't yeah, thank you enough. Gonna look for some people. We're going to rest here a bit. I have anything with me right now? Come back by Dohan sometime so I can give you a hero's word. Likely be useful. Anything you have to offer me. Very fair. So we took some of the herb. We said, eh, keep your crap. I'll keep the herb myself. I'll keep some of that. So there we go. All right. We're going to move on a little bit further into the uh, prelude. I don't want to spoil too much for you guys, though. There's our girl, Lilith. There we go. This is the source. This was a mountainside. Did the crystals make this hole? No. There is a beast dwelling within this cave. It isn't safe to talk here. Meet me at the cabin. I will explain there. We just got here, yo. Shouldn't we at least try to... No. For this, we must prepare. Put my own little spit on it, alright? <laughs> After a long trip, I have finally arrived at this beautiful cabin. What kind of animal is in there, Lilith? That was no animal, you bastard. Creature that dwells within the cave holds a power that is not meant to exist in this world. Not sort of malice, like us. Not like us, not anymore. The presence in that cave is not one born from blood or divinity, but from hubris. It's the beginning of time itself in a land far from here, and long forgotten our kind lived peacefully. Peace always comes to an end when there are others who desire power, and thus we were shackled in chains. Those of us who were revolted were hunted down and slaughtered. Those who were able to flee searched for what seemed like millennia for a place to stay out of reach. This is how we came to be in malice, and... Ferris? The soul festering in that cave was of those who braved the voyage. How did, how did Ferris become that? I fear that is something... I fear there is something larger at play here. For now, we must prepare. We need to ensure that the beast is contained, or it may very well bring on the end of the denizens of these forests. If he's like you, I'm not sure there's anything I can do to assist. I'm not strong enough. You will be, Atlas. Rest for the night. Tomorrow you will gather materials required to make a weapon strong enough to pierce a daemon's hide. Crafting. Story continues. There we go. Bug fix patch, September, feature, October, content update, November. So there's plans for the prelude to be updated, but unfortunately we're not quite there yet. I will definitely keep my eyes on this game and I will update you guys as it gets future content. I hope you guys enjoyed this first look at it. Let's move. Let's move to our final, final portion of the video as I always like to do. I'm going to do pros, suggestions, and final thoughts on Rising Spire, the prelude. Let's do this. The pros, suggestions, and final thoughts for the Rising Spire. This is based purely off the prelude that you guys saw me play, which again, I want to stress that it's very early on in the development process. Pros, I love the animations and character design. It's just, uh, they kind of pop a little bit, you know, when you're running around exploring the world. The character model just, it seems good. It seems like it's well, it doesn't seem. It is. It's it's above those typical classic RPG sprites, right? We're not dealing with sprites anymore, so the quality is, is higher. Not that sprites are bad. I do like my, my pixel games, my sprites and stuff, but this has just got a pleasant look to it. And then the animations during combat, I know I talked about that, like the spear thrust and, and the actual animations for the attacks. I think they look great. I really like that. Uh, world exploration is nice. You can go off the beaten path. You can really uh, find some areas that look cool look cool i'm going to show you we're going to touch on that a little bit in the suggestions you'll see uh, i love the weapon talents like that there's choices there that you can choose between one or another talent at each tier and i like that i like that in rpgs you know talent tree type stuff i'm a big mmo player so talent trees are my thing uh the story while it's hard to judge at this point super early on in the game uh it seems to have a tone that i look for in my rpgs there are some darker elements like a large amount of people being slaughtered during a revolt, and that resulted in the formation of a demon in that cave that they didn't want to go into attack. So that demon was formed by, like, the... I don't know, like, the, the evil thoughts of the people that were killed. Like, they have a lot of, I guess, regret, and... And, I don't know. You're gonna be pissed off, right? You're gonna want revenge. So it kind of, like, formed this demon, because all this... This hate... Like formulating into one area. I thought that was a pretty cool story element. I've seen that done in some other games and stuff, but I like that they're they're touching on a little bit more of darker elements. Like that's pretty grim. An entire people being slaughtered by an army or something like that. So I like it. I'm curious to see how how the rest of the story goes. I hope it's got those those darker elements. Uh, what can I say? I'm I'm a 
I'm sick of the, the power of friendship stuff, all right? It's not my thing. Suggestions. Again, these suggestions are based off the very, very, very early state of the game. That's why they're called suggestions and not cons. Because we have time to provide feedback, provide our suggestions, and hopefully mold the game into something better than it would be if the community did not give feedback. All right? Your feedback matters to indie devs. Triple A devs, they don't give a crap about us, right? All right, move on. Let's do this. World exploration. I touched on it being a pro. It's great. It feels cool exploring in between the trees and finding the, you know, the hidden paths and stuff, but we need rewards for that. We need secrets, chests. Maybe you find an elite enemy out there that looks different than the normal patrolling enemies. You're like, oh, damn, what the hell's that? And you go fight him. You fight a hard fight. You kill him. You get better crafting mats. He might just drop a weapon or something. Something very rewarding. I want to have a reason to explore. I think that's very important in a game like this. A third talent for each weapon tier. Two is nice, but if you add... I'm not doing the math because I'm horrible at that. But if you add a third option to every tier, it immensely increases the amount of customization. I think that's like the sweet spot, you know? Three choices per tier rather than two. I think that really bolsters the amount of customization and different builds you'll see players running with. So I would consider that. Uh, character progression beyond, we beyond weapons alone. So I was thinking, like, if you level your spear, I don't know, level 20 spear, and then you get a, a hammer or something, you get a big, big mace, and you switch to that because it's a new weapon, you want to try it out, you're now extremely weak because you're having a level 1 weapon in your hands versus the spear that you already have leveled quite far. You want to swap to the hammer, but it kind of feels like crap because now you're back to very weak state and you got to build back up now so i'd love to see a different form of progression maybe it doesn't have talents at all maybe it's not that deep i mean i i would always love that more per, more talent trees more customization is always good but we could do like a character level and then the talents are on the weapons themselves i could see that being a thing and that would probably uh flow a little bit better rather than just you know level 20 my cat just sneezed rather than level 20 weapon down to level one at least you still have like a high level character supporting that level one weapon. Voice acting. I know this is a touchy topic when it comes to indie games because voice acting costs money, right? That's a thing that a lot of indie devs don't invest in because it's expensive and it's hard to do. I would love to see indie devs say, hey, are there any volunteers out there? We'll give our game for free. Would you guys like to record? Maybe an hour worth of lines and send us uh, your recordings. I don't know about you guys, but if I saw that, a call for that, all right, I'm in. You guys want Ray Romano in your game? I can voice Ray Romano perfectly, as you can hear. All right, this is my natural voice. <laughs> but for real, I would I would volunteer. I mean, I got my voice acting voice. All right, like uh, what did I do? Um, hold the line, brothers. We okay? That's horrible. Should I cut this out? No, I'm, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it. Victory is but one swing away. All right, there's my voice acting voice. <laughs> All right, the soundtrack I think needs work. Um, this is another thing that that you know uh, indie devs might not be so, too keen to invest some money in, but I think in an RPG like this, you need that those songs that you know you you people add to their their battle playlists. People just remember in their head from way back in the day, like. I don't know. What what game is that? Someone let me know. You'll prove my point if you can guess the game. Or, you know, um... Everyone knows that, right? Like, you need you need something that's memorable, something that, that gets the battle, gets the blood flowing in the, in the boss battles and stuff, so I'm hoping we see some work with the soundtrack so it's not just, like, one song on repeat. Final thoughts. Uh, while Rising Spire is super early in the development process... I can tell that it checks the boxes that I look for in classic style RPGs. If Rising Spire delivers with a gripping story, deep RPG progression, and a world map worth exploring, I would jump on this purchase day one. So I hope you guys liked this first look at Rising Spire. I did. The Prelude specifically. First look at the Prelude. Um, like I said before, I'm going to keep my eyes on this game, and we'll definitely do an update video, especially for the launch into the 
full game, I will absolutely be doing another video. I guys, I really appreciate you sticking around all the way to the end of this video. I know this one was a little bit longer with me just ranting at the end here, but I was having fun with it, alright? Don't sue me. Some people say sue me, but don't. I don't know. You guys might actually. But uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Throw us a sub if you like the content, and that like button, all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next video! Skip!